Hello everybody, Alex Lambert here. Just got done watching the Daytona Duels and oh my goodness, that was an absolutely incredible race. That was extremely exciting. Uh, both of those races were extremely exciting. We had two fantastic finishes. We had sparks flying. We had a couple of big crashes in that last duel. Absolutely incredible. Uh, and without any farther ado, let's go ahead and talk about what happened tonight. It was a long night. It's a late night. It's past 1 a.m. Eastern here. Um, but, yeah, let's go ahead and get on into it. So, duel number one. They, you know, if you've been watching Fox over the last few years, Larry McReynolds always talks about how there's there's one duel race that's calm, and there's one duel that's a little bit more wild. Well, at first, I thought the first duel race maybe was the wild one, but not at all. Duel number one was extremely calm compared compared to duel number two. But let's talk about duel number one first. It was, it was, there weren't, there weren't any crashes. There wasn't a lot of beating and banging, but... Compared to previous duel races, if I go back to since I've been watching NASCAR, the duels, I think there's been one wreck in, in all the duels that I've watched. And I've been a fan for coming up on, what, seven, eight years now. And I usually watch the duels. It's usually just a train, a line of cars on the high side. Not at all this year. The entire race, side by side, both races were like that. But let's talk about the first race. Uh, a couple of the big storylines in that first race was that Austin Cindric will make it into the Daytona 500. So that's certainly great for him. That's certainly great for his team. Uh, he was able to outrun his competitors uh, that do not have a charter. And he will be in the 2021 Daytona 500. Another one, Hamlin ran out of gas right at the end of this race. Hamlin was up there. He was potentially battling for the win right at the end of the race did unfortunately run out of fuel therefore Hamlin will have to start farther in the back going into Sunday's 500 but that's not a big deal Denny Hamlin's no stranger at working his way through the field uh at restrictor or I'm sorry not restricted plate at super speedway racetracks um so that certainly will be fun to watch and like I said Daytona 500 is 200 laps at least uh you got plenty of time to get up to the front. And at Daytona, you can go from, you can gain 20 spots or lose 20 spots in a lap, um, which happened tonight at certain points. Uh, so the duel number one finished. The win does go to Eric Amarola. Eric Amarola led plenty of laps in the first duel at Daytona. Uh, I wouldn't say it was a dominating performance, but he did lead a whole bunch of laps. He ran a very well race. Uh, but right at the end, Joey Logano and Christopher Bell, that's right, rookie Christopher Bell, tried to take that win away. That would probably, would that, that would have been pretty big for Christopher bell you know being his first year i know it's just a duel it's just a duel win but it still would have been special to him to kind of get that trophy get that that victory uh with you know you your new team your new crew chief that certainly would have been big for him but he couldn't quite get it done and maybe it was a little bit of the inexperience for him because i think if you were looked at another veteran driver christopher bell might have went to the inside to pass Eric Amarola. I think. I think if 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 uh, Christopher Bell uh, in that in that 20 car would have went down low, I think it would have had a much better shot to pass Amarola for the win. But you know who knows? I mean, these are split second second decisions, and obviously I'm not a driver, so I probably don't know quite as much as Christopher Bell does. But I think I think there would have been a better shot. He would have caught. He would have been able to get past the 10 car if he went down low. But anyway. Eric Amarola will win the first duel at Daytona. Now, unfortunately, after the first duel at Daytona, they said, they told us it was going to be about a 20-minute wait from the first to the second. Uh, unfortunately, it was more like three hours and 20 minutes. Uh, right before we got the second duel underway, there was a, a little bit of rain on the back straightaway. They had to dry that out, uh, and they couldn't get that dry until the big, heavy showers came over and completely covered the racetrack that was a lost racetrack it takes at least 90 minutes to dry daytona especially at night in february uh, but they did get that track dry we actually had one of the air titans slide off the racetrack uh and that was just kind of a foreshadowing of this is going to be a cr pretty crazy race so we had to wait three and a half hours uh went late into the night the race started a little bit after 11 o'clock the second race started a little bit after 11 o'clock but it was definitely worth the rate wait a lot of action took place in the second duel so the second duel that we did have to wait to see had a whole lot of side-by-side -side racing the entire night from start to finish, the whole 60 laps. It had everything, but right before we had to do those first pit stops, we were the, the drivers, what's the fuel mileage around, what, 40 to 42, maybe 44 laps at Daytona, and right before we got to that point with 25 laps to go, so that was on lap 35, we had the first wreck of the night, and that was kind of the first bit of contact that we had. Now, that had a lot of uh, a lot of drivers that were racing to get into the 500. We had Garrett Smithley involved in that one. I believe Gragson was involved up in that one. Um, so certainly disappointing for those guys uh, to have some of that damage. 
I know, I know, uh, Gra Gralla was involved in that one. I gotta learn how to say his name, because I know he raced, I believe he raced in a race in 2020, I believe he raced in the Daytona Road Course race, and actually got a top 10 finish uh, in that race. I believe he finished 7th, uh, so Gralla, gotta learn how to say his name, I will. Uh, I think, potentially, he should be watched, and, you know, maybe, maybe he, can, he can move up, maybe get a better ride in the Xfinity Series or Truck Series, and then potentially uh, we see what he can do at Cup, but he did get that top 5 at the Road Course, or top 10, at the road course at Daytona back in 2020. I do remember that uh, from Gralla. But he was uh, caught up in an accident in that first accident. But he didn't have a whole lot of damage. I believe he was, he was, he, he was still, he still made it in. So as long as he still made it into the 500, that's certainly uh, some big news. But then we did have that wreck with 25 to go. That was more of cars sliding around. That wasn't really the big incident of the day. We had another big incident with four laps to go. That was the big wreck that took out a lot of big names. Brad Keselowski was involved in that one. Uh, William Byron was involved in that one. Your pole sitter, or I'm sorry, not your pole sitter, your second place driver was involved in that one. He will not start on the front row anymore after that accident. Uh, with four laps to go, unfortunately. And that's unfortunate for Byron, because Byron had this race won, it seemed like. Byron was leading all these laps. It seemed like Byron was leading, and he was getting pushed from Austin Dillon the entire night. I'm talking at least the first 55 out of the 60 laps. Byron had an incredible car, was doing an extremely good job um, in this race. That was an, doing an extremely good job, you know, switching lanes, holding them off, because there was a lot of double-wide racing uh, in this race. He was doing an incredible job, but unfortunately... He did get shuffled to the back, uh, you know, kind of got jumped by the other drivers, got sucked into the middle, and got put in the mid-pack right there in the wreck. It also took out Brad Keselowski. Uh, Noah Gragson was taken out in that one, which is disappointing for Noah Gragson, considering he's having a good run. It looked like he was going to make the Daytona 500, uh, at least if he could have just continued, you know, doing what he was doing. He had a good shot to race his way in, and then unfortunately, like, unfortunately did get caught up in the wreck along with Garrett Smithley. Uh, now, Garrett Smithley got caught up in a couple accidents tonight. He actually got caught up in the la in the accident on lap 35, and then the second wreck. You, you might can place the blame on Brad Keselowski. I'm a Kyle Busch fan, so I might might place the blame on Keselowski, but uh, I'm just kidding. But, but you know, that was kind of a dicey move by Smithley, and then, you know, you could also claim that, that Brad Keselowski went up a little bit, and you could claim that Smithley, you know, shouldn't have tried to take, take the middle lane there. So, that could go both ways, but certainly just one of those Daytona incidences. Um, we see those types of things all the time, maybe not in the duels. I'm kind of like, you know, maybe you shouldn't have been so aggressive in a duel race. You could say that to both of those drivers because uh, you want to protect that Daytona car. Because one thing I think going into this duel was don't wreck the Daytona car. You don't want to wreck that primary Daytona 500 car, but there were certainly some of those wrecked tonight, which is very disappointing. Uh, but yep, we did have a couple of wrecks. Unfortunately, Ross Chastain was also in that in that uh, crash as well, so he will most likely have to go to a backup car come Sunday. There are a couple of drivers I want to mention before I talk about the winner of the second duel. Okay, so Austin Dillon got the win in the duel. He was pushing William Byron the entire day and was able to win the race, but he did not have it easy. He had Kevin Harvick, Kyle Busch, and Bubba Wallace breathing down his neck. Now, one driver I really want to talk about is Bubba Wallace driving the 2311 car uh, for the new for the new team 2311 uh, in that 23 race car. He did an absolutely pretty good job. You got to think him and Kyle Busch both were shuffled to the back multiple times in this race, but were able to get back up front. Um, and unfortunately, Bubba was just unable to get past past Austin Dillon there in the final lap. But Bubba's car. And this, this might have something to do with the driver. This probably has something to do with the team. Bubba's car was extremely fast. You look, if you look at the lap times, Bubba's car, even in traffic, was at times a quarter a quarter of a second, which is huge, especially when you're talking about in traffic, was about you know two-tenths faster uh, than everybody else in the field than the second than the second fastest lap at some time. So that was certainly uh, incredible to see when, when Fox was showing the, uh, the graph of fastest laps, you know, the last fast lap. Stuff like that. I mean, he had a really fast race car. And Bubba was running extremely fast lap times, which can show that not only he can be a threat in the Daytona 500, but potentially, if he's got that good of a team, could be a big threat going into the 2021 season, even into the mile and a half tracks and the shorter race tracks. So that was something that's a bit interesting to look at. He was fast in qualifying, and he was also very fast tonight. Um, but like I said, unfortunately, he wasn't able to get the win, uh, and Austin Dillon did get by him and take that dual win. So Austin Dillon will start, I believe, third since uh, since Byron is out in the Daytona 500. Bubba Wallace was rough on himself. I don't think he should be too rough on himself. 
Did he make a few mistakes that mm, could cost him a 500 win or could have caused a big wreck? Uh, definitely. I think there were some instances where Bubba, you know, kind of cut down in front of Kyle Busch maybe a little bit too much and could have could have uh, had caused a big wreck and wrecked that very fast race car. So I think that's why Bubba was upset with himself. He even said in his interview, I'm glad Kyle uh, cut me a couple of breaks there because Kyle it looked like he wanted to turn him really bad, but he didn't do it. He, he just let off the gas. Kyle let off the gas uh, and saved, saved both of them uh, from being involved in a big crash. Kevin Harvick was also very fast. Kevin Harvick pushed Austin Dillon past Bubba Wallace to win the race. You know, right at the end, it was it was you know those just those two going for it. But Kevin Harvick certainly pushed um, him past Austin Dillon. Then you had Kyle Busch pushing pushing uh, uh, Bubba Wallace. But anyway, incredible race. We had those two big wrecks uh, in the second Daytona duel. It was side by side action for a long time. William Byron did extremely well in that race. He led a whole bunch of laps. Like I said, Dillon was second, but man. That was an incredible race. That was some of the best duel duels at Daytona that I have ever watched, and I'm glad that it wasn't just uh, you know cars riding the high line the whole time. I am upset about the wrecks. You know, you never like to see the 500 cars get wrecked before they even get to start the 500. But I thought it was still in some incredible racing, uh, and man, just building up. You know, we had an incredible clash. You know, we you know qualifying wasn't that interesting, but we had cars on track yesterday. Uh, we've got. We had an incredible duels tonight. Even the first duel was incredible, but the second one just was absolutely amazing. It just I hate that we had the rain delay, but besides that, the duels were incredible. And then we will we will see the car, the Daytona car is on track one more time on Saturday. There is a practice session on Saturday. That will be the last time we see the cars on track until the Daytona 500, which is now just two days away. So certainly looking forward to that. Hope you guys tune into the review video after that. Uh, and that's it. That's all there is to talk about after a great, it was a late night, but it was a good night uh, in Daytona. So certainly excited for the 2021 season. That's it. That's all there is to talk about. If you're not first, you're last. And of course, let's get rowdy.